Welcome to our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and comment below if you have any topics you'd like to see covered that we haven't already. And also subscribe and get notified when we post new videos. In this video, we will cover how to effectively practice to learn. First, the why. Why should you practice? Think of your brain as a muscle. When you train it through studying, it gets better at what you are training it to do. Brain strength comes from connections that your brain builds when you study or practice. If you lift weights, your muscles get big and you can lift heavy things. When you study, you build connections in your brain so you can understand concepts and demonstrate them. These connections are necessary for your brain's ability to perform what you want to do. Your brain learns by doing, and like a muscle, it gets good at exactly what you practice. For example, sitting in a math lecture, drinking coffee, watching your instructor solve math problems gets you really, really good at watching someone solve math problems while drinking coffee. It is only in you doing and practicing that you get good at something. This means you need to practice, practice, practice. Doing homework can be your practice, much like a musician or athlete practices regularly. Why does this work? You need to practice because when you do, you build stronger brain connections. Stronger brain connections allow information to pass through your brain more easily and helps you move information from your short-term to your long-term memory. You increase the ease at which information can be passed through your brain. Your brain becomes more efficient. More efficient connections actually makes it easier to learn new material. This is pretty important when you're coming down to the last weeks of the term and new information is still being taught. A convincing fact in support of reviewing and practicing is modeled in what is called the curve of forgetting. Identified by German psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus in 1885, if you learn a new concept in lecture, at that moment you have 100% recall. If you try an example within 20 minutes, you'll remember 60% of what you learned. If you wait a day to practice, you'll only remember about 40% of what you learned. This shows that by doing work right after learning a concept will help you retain information. You can also slow that forgetting curve down dramatically by revisiting the work again at regular intervals. This combination will allow you to recall with 100% accuracy all that you want to remember. As author John Medina says in his book Brain Rules, how do you remember better? Repeated exposure to information in specifically timed intervals provides the powerful way to fix memory into the brain. Deliberately re-expose yourself to the information more elaborately and in fixed space intervals if you want the retrieval to be the most vivid it can be. Learning occurs best when new information is incorporated gradually into the memory store rather than when it is jammed in all at once. Now that you understand why you practice, let's talk about how to practice the right way. First, with patience. Work takes time, so be patient. Allow your brain the time it requires to learn. Before you start, quickly review your notes so you can get an effective start on your work. Instead of having to reteach yourself everything, remember to use your notes as a resource. Breaks. You need to take them as your brain needs them. For example, study for 50 minutes, then take a 5 to 10 minute break. Think about that break as your reward for working hard, but then get right back to work. Attitude. Take a thoughtful approach to your practice and remember that you are learning. You are not doing work for points or to jump through hoops, but to learn the material and be able to apply it in your life. And as a nice side result to be successful taking your exams. Write down every step and understand the reasons why you're doing each step. Timing. You need to at least start your practice within 24 hours of learning the new concepts. You absolutely must do it before the next class meeting, as the new material in that class will be based on the topics your instructor has assumed you've mastered from the previously assigned work. Some students do very well in study groups. Just be certain that you are understanding the material. It can be more beneficial to do your work alone first and then meet with the group to solidify concepts or get help on things you don't understand. Having to explain a concept to someone else ensures understanding and sometimes a classmate can explain something to you in a different way than your instructor did that will help make it click. If you get something wrong or your work is not quite correct, mark it with a star and try to figure out why you had the misunderstanding. The goal is to learn from your mistakes by figuring out the mistake for yourself. It's not until you can produce your own work without any outside resources that you've truly learned the material. Relying too much on outside resources can easily become a crutch and when that crutch is taken away during an exam can lead to test anxiety. You have a lot of resources to figure out your misconceptions such as notes, books, tutoring, your instructor, or videos. 
If a solutions manual is available, use this only as a last resort. Once you've done that, work a similar problem to ensure you won't make the same mistake again. Before exams, go back to these problems you've marked with a star to make sure you can do them correctly. Realize that making a mistake while practicing is a good thing. You get to fix it, learn from it, and thus not make it on the exam. If you get stuck during your work, don't get frustrated. Remain calm and remember you're learning. Getting stuck is part of the learning process. If you get stuck, do the following. Stop and review your notes. Try to find a similar example that might help with the problem you're stuck on. Feel free to move on to the next concept. Level of difficulty is not always in order. Reach out to your instructor by attending office hours or emailing. Instructors are there to help. Get help from your school's student learning center or other resources your school provides for support. Try taking a break. You may be surprised by what a quick walk around the building can do for your brain. When you get back, you may be able to magically answer that question. And just a few more things to consider. Find a place and time that can meet your needs for optimal concentration when you're doing your work. And make sure to minimize distractions as much as possible, like social media, phones, TV, etc. Provide your brain with as a distraction-free environment as possible to fully process information. Don't wait until the last minute to do work. This will only make you feel rushed, stressed, and anxious. This may even mean doing your work in small pieces or chunks. You need time to process information, so give yourself the chance to do that. With these strategies in hand, you take responsibility for your own learning. And the great news is, you can do it.